We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight, we deep dive into our question pile to find the question that's at the bottom of the pile. The oldest question on our list. It comes from Binks Games, who wrote, My game night question is, what is your snack of choice? Is it the same as your game group? Well, thanks so much for your question, Binks Games. Now, Binks Games is an indie game publisher whose first ever game was Pulsar Event and who recently launched a new game called Buy It or Don't, an adult party game. You can find their stuff at BinksGames.com, B-I-N-K-S-G-A-M-E-S. So this is a pretty simple question, and it's one we have actually answered in one form or another on various AMAs. Now, we also in the past did go into quite a bit of detail on the topic of food etiquette. That goes way back to episode 25, uh, which we named Blue Plate Special. Now, the focus there was on dinner. What do you do for dinner? Who arranges dinner? Who holds the pizza and stuff like that? So what I thought we'd do tonight was, again, focus mainly on, mainly on snacks due to that's what the Binks Games question is, but also expand on it. There's a few, I want to dive deeper than just finding out what our, what our favorite snacks are. We can cover that on an AMA, but I want to go into a little bit more detail tonight. So let's start off with the actual question first. So Binks wants to know, Sean, what's your snack of choice for game night? And is it the same as the people you game with? Which I think in your case, in most cases, is your kids. I say, you know, until very recently, I was all about the potato chips when it came to snacking. But alas, due to some digestive reasons, and because almost every potato chip flavor now includes lactose injected into it or something, mm -hmm. uh, I have pivoted to more pretzel-based snacks. Okay. Uh, my kids tend to be split between pretzels and popcorn, but as smart food is generally the popcorn of choice, it is particularly bad for getting everywhere and on everything. That white powder cheddar is it, it nasty. Is. It is bad. Now, I think smart food is a Canadian thing. So I think I remember mentioning it before, having the Americans confused. But smart food is this white cheddar popcorn that by the time you're eating, your fingers are two inches thicker because the stuff just like coats everything. Yeah. And it's kind of like drywall. <laughs> it just kind of gets <laughs> it is. everywhere. I mean, the people who love it love the flavor, but the actual topping just does not it adheres to, to the, uh, the touch. Yes. So I, I, do admit, try I, to, I do try to encourage pretzels whenever possible. Fair. I do enjoy smart food, but like you, that is not one I'm going to break out at a game night. <laughs> now, similarly, for me, it has changed over time, right? Um, for years and years, um, it was a particular brand of chocolate bar, uh, which we called the Spider Butter Bar because it was a berdadachide in French, which would always look like butter for arachnids. Um, it wasn't. It was just silly. And it was... The O. Henry peanut butter flavor, which I don't even know if they make anymore. I haven't seen one in years. Like going down the aisles at Costco or Shoppers, you know, they have the impulse buys. I have not seen one in years. So I'm guessing this is dead. There was that. There were combos. Because the problem with the, the, the spider butter bar, I buy one or two from like 7-Eleven and eat them generally quickly. Whereas just snacking during play, it was always combos. I still, to this day, love combos. Combos are my favorite savory snack. And well, Jolt Cola. Uh, was the thing um i am pretty sure i owe a lot of my digestive problems now to the sheer amount of jolt cola and other colas that i drank by the can by the case uh back in my teens Indeed. now yeah we, we even actually managed to get a hold of kick which wasn't yes. actually legal for sale in canada for various obscure legislative reasons uh, but it was essentially Mountain Dew with the amount of caffeine of Jolt yes. or more. Oh, I used to love that stuff. I did. I, the kick was amazing. I, anytime I went over to the States, I would pick up a, a 6 or 12 or 24 pack of kick if I could. There was also Surge was another one I remember getting. And I don't remember what exactly that. We, we wanted the high caffeine cola. I liked the taste of caffeine. I still enjoy, I, if I had an option to drink a Jolt right now instead of this coffee, I'd be doing it. I should have. Now, if those weren't available, because especially combos for some reason, I don't know if it's a Canadian thing, are just hard to find. Like, like certain specific places have them, but they're not readily available. And while Jolt was always difficult to find. So if you couldn't get that, I, I was chips or pretzels. Now, specifically not, I, I actually prefer plain chips. Like, I, I know it's, it's a travesty. Everyone's got their flavor, fl favorite flavor. 
But for me, it was always just plain Lay's chips were always my favorite. Now, honestly, nothing. Like, like for game night, I don't, we don't snack generally at all. Uh, what it is, though, is we prefer to get together as a group and have a meal sitting down just a meal before play, which usually means by the time we're sitting down playing, we're all quite full and not really interested in snacking anymore. Yeah, and this is really kind of the ideal. And we've talked about this before on episodes and AMAs. Uh, for me with the kids, our gaming is usually pre-dinner. So uh, we stop when and go make and eat, make or eat dinner when the game is over or when the hunger has hit that level where there's no real choice to focus or eat. Eating must happen. You got to worry about the kids getting hangry while they're playing. At least yeah. I do. That's one of the reasons I don't play with my kids on an empty stomach. <laughs> And sometimes when we play over at uh, these moms, if dinner goes a little late, you can always tell. Right. Now, uh, as for my game groups, right now, uh, it's eat together beforehand. Uh, usually we order from a locally owned restaurant or we get takeout or delivery one way or one way or another. And if there's any snacking, it's usually leftovers, right? Like we, we'll get pizza or whatever. And then, you know, halfway through the night, it kind of hits and people walk over to the, the pizza box and still have some left in. Now, back in the day, though, my groups, the rule used to be you bring your own snacks of choice and you share. It's whatever you bring. It, it doesn't even have to be everyone likes it, but you have to be willing to share. And what would happen is people would show up and they would just dump it on the table. Now, I got a big table, so it's easy to do that and not get in the way of the game. And most of the time back then we were playing role playing games. So the center of the table wasn't like the place the board had to be. And well, people would help themselves. Uh, popular items that were a little unusual included packs of Oreos. Someone would always bring a pack of Oreos. Um, I don't, again, I think this is a Canadian thing, but the McCain chocolate cake that's in a tin, those were popular. And chips of various flavors. Chips were always popular. And cheese. How have you not yet, at this point in this discussion, mentioned cheese? <laughs> okay, cheese is what I like to snack on, but I don't usually snack on it during play. I, that, I, that was I, not really a... There are a number of Saturdays at the university where I beg to differ, you would bring a brick right. of cheese to ro to role playing, and as the GM, you would be sitting there not only eating it, but you would also be accepting it as bribes from players. Okay, <laughs> okay there was a cheese phase in there. I still like cheese. I also remember showing up with a summer sausage and like a knife, just yep. carving off chunks yep. and eating it. That, those were our trail rations. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So role playing there was cheese. I do. I eat a lot of cheese as a snack. That's my favorite nighttime snack. I gotta take I gotta eat something with my pill um before I go to bed. And it's often cheese with a few crackers. Crackers is another big one. Actually, I kind of miss that. I, I eat a lot of crackers. Though I love pretzels and I love crackers and I love combos. I do not love the cracker combos. Those are bad. Mm -hmm. You need yep. the pretzel combos. Those the the pre the the cracker combos. I just absorb all of the liquid from your body yes um and you you know your eyes dry out as you're eating them it's something strange well, I'm, I'm not he's, he's not wrong so yeah the, the, definitely the cheese that's definitely a thing so those, those are generally our preference right uh like right now if we were gonna have a game night uh the other thing <laughs> the amusing one this time of year there's more snacks at my table because there's all the halloween candy my kids won't eat gets put into a wooden bowl that sits in the center of the table, which is often still there when Sean comes down for New Year's Eve, because there'll be little bits left. And um, that is definitely the favorite of uh, Sean Hamilton, not Sean from Hamilton, and my regular Monday night group eating some of the most horrid, no-name brand, rubbery, or hard candy stuff from the bowl, which some of that becomes kind of a challenge to see who will eat what. So there is that. But that's like a seasonal thing. That's seasonal snacking that just helps get rid of the leftover Halloween Fair candy enough. that we have. All right. Next, I want to talk a bit about rules for snacks at the game table. I, I'd say written or unwritten here because some people do have a formal document for their their house their house rules, their rules of the house. Um, or they establish something during session zero. So it's fair enough. A, a social contract, written or unwritten. Do you have any rules for the kids when playing games besides no smart food? Uh, wipe your hands. That's pretty much it. Uh, right. My kids are water drinkers, so I don't have to worry as much about spills. And I admit it, and, and I'm still shocked. <laughs> he has never actually yelled at me. I am a coffee on the table guy. Um, so I, I can't really talk. I do tend towards chunkier mugs 
that yep. would slide before they ever get knocked over. But I, I am a coffee on the table guy. I admit it. Yeah, we've talked about that one before. I, I didn't really get into drinks when I was writing the show notes here. It was I was thinking food and snacks. But yeah, side tables, we have them. Just got to <laughs> ask. We got four down in the basement. We can kind of scatter them around the table. But yeah, the, the big thing, uh, as I mentioned back on episode 25, and we kind of mentioned here as well, uh, meals are away from the game table. Like if you are going to, or or you clear off the game table, you have a meal, then you break the game zone. Either, either you do it somewhere else or you do it on, like on a clean table. But as for snacks, they're welcome. I, I My personal request, though, is unless you're playing a role-playing game where everything's your own, right? You've got your own dice, your own pencil, your own character sheet, your base, and only touching your own stuff. I want people to stay away from sick, sticky, saucy, powdery foods. Now, I am perfectly fine if you're playing D&D and all you touch is your own stuff and you want to mow down on some Cheetos and Doritos. It's your character sheet. And I, I, we have a friend who has some pretty epic character sheets by the end of, uh, you know, two years worth of play. And, 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 and the marks on that sheet could tell stories. Um, so I just ask people avoid them when playing a game with shared components. If you have shared components and there's lots of components handling going on, especially cards, cards are specifically, if you're playing any kind of card game, um, there's a reason the bicycle cards are plasticized. <laughs> Most board games don't go to that level of easy to clean up. So that's the biggest thing for me is, is avoid any, I think everyone knows what I mean by, by sticky, saucy, powdery foods. And even if you are avoiding that, keep some paper towels handy. Yes. <laughs> oh, and one that Sean likes to point out that I always forget to tell people is point out where the garbage is as well. Know where to put the refuse from. Especially your if you've got, you know, cutesy hidden away garbage that out of, out of sight, out of mind. Yes, uh, we have a the, the same friend who liked to squirrel things on our bookshelf. Uh, though I think he knew where the garbage was. <laughs> so yeah, keep your keep your towels handy. Uh, as Sean said, wipe up. You know, do something between snacks. Now, one of the things that now exists that gamer the video gamers have developed the chopstick thing. Maybe if you get a set of those, you could eat some Cheetos. I don't know if you've seen those yet. They slip over your fingers. Oh, and yeah. so you can still use your hands to play, but you have these like chopsticks on the end to grab. Oh, I was Cheetos. just thinking having chopsticks nearby. I'm like, I always have well, chopsticks, chopsticks nearby. Chopsticks would also work, right? <laughs> like that way your hands don't get dirty. Yeah. And then um, the other thing too is, is uh, that you totally, in my opinion, want to avoid are dips. I have never, ever played a game or had dips at a table where at least one dollop didn't hit the table. It doesn't matter how careful you are, what you're trying to do. It always hits something, splatters on the table between the plates, your hand, when putting, scooping stuff onto your plate, when you're just dipping right from the bowl, whatever it happens to be. I have never had a dip out where something didn't hit the table. And while if there's games there, it's going to hit the games and not the table. Yep. Uh, we, we had some chatter in the Discord about dips, uh, specifically in the, the uh, pandemic era, how, mm. you know, dips should go that? onto plates and 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 so you've got your own personal plate with some dip on or bowl with some dip on it and then you can sort of do the do the you know ramen style dip and chip yep. eating but that's yeah that really i know still you got the plate it's putting it on the plate you do that <laughs> there's still that the the the, the liquid is traveling at some point <laughs> over the table maybe you go put it in another room like over off to the side and then you put it on your plate but then someone you know i don't know puts their plate on the table and someone rolls some dice and they plop into the dip. I, I, dips are bad. Like I like dips, but again, save those, save those for before or after the game, in my opinion. So next let's spend a bit of time talking about where these snacks are coming from. Who should be the one providing the snacks for game night? And straight up, I got to say, it shouldn't necessarily be the host of the event or the game master when talking about role-playing games. If someone is inviting you into their house to play games with them and they're doing all the work leading up to that event, like cleaning up, picking out games, getting games ready to play, teaching you the games, or on the RPG side, spending their off time prepping the games, shopping for miniatures, creating scenery, creating dungeons, the least the other players can do is either bring snacks for everyone, including the host, or bring their own snacks so as to relieve that burden from the host. There's enough other stuff going on that the host has to worry about. Plus, providing snacks is a great way of saying thank you to the work these people are doing and the opportunity to share playing games with them. Absolutely. 
So if the host is throwing a dinner party and the guests are the one bringing the games, then we can talk about doing something else. But mm. if the host is hosting the games, then no, absolutely. Uh, you, there's no reason that they need to do everything uh, food involved as well yes. as make sure you are entertained. Yeah, that should, to me shouldn't be part of it. And I, I realize it's kind of a trope and a thing that's built over up over the years, especially in the role playing scene everything is on the dm that needs to stop it's way too much work for one player remember it's supposed to be fun for everyone at the table now methods i've used over the years for deciding who brings snacks includes everyone brings something to share with everyone else that's my default is you bring what you like if someone else likes it you can share it with. if someone doesn't like it well then they'll eat the other people's stuff Another one is taking turns, like this week it's you, this week it's you, this week it's you, this week it's you. But in that case, you probably want to make sure you're bringing something everyone enjoys. Another is everyone brings their own snacks and they're theirs, they're, they're mine. And you snack on your own. That way you don't have to worry about someone not liking something or anything else. Now, one of the ones I did back in the day to get people to start bringing snacks, and it actually kind of set, it did a Pavlov thing. So the, like I did this for D&D 4E. And I would provide players with in-game bonuses for bringing snacks. Now, this was a, a whole thing I did with a bunch of other things you got rewarded points for. And then you rolled on a D1000 table to get a bonus you could use in-game. And it was based on all kinds of stuff, like helping the DM or tracking, tracking initiative. But one of them was bringing snacks. Well, all those players got to the point where they always brought snacks because they wanted this roll on the table. But then when we stopped playing D&D, they still kept bringing snacks. So that worked awesome. That just like set it up for that. And I didn't provide snacks. I was a DM. I was the one at the table handing out in-game rewards. Now, I've also seen other groups that make a snack pool where they kind of pool their money and purchase at bulk at Costco, which I think is a kind of interesting idea. And of course, there's the people who love the host and just take over all the food and snacking. And there's games where everyone's expected to be full when they show up. And if they want a snack, save it for some other time. Yeah. And as we've said for many topics, work it out in advance. If you leave it for people to just work out in some unspoken manner, oh, we're having a game night and don't even mention snacks, people will be disappointed. Even if they are polite enough to say it, someone yeah. will be expecting something if it's not said explicitly. Yeah, very true. It's the same thing we've said a million times, right? Set expectations. It is something to think of, right? If you're setting up a game night, especially for the first time, figure out what you're doing for this before you figure out everything else. Like, don't just show up expecting something and don't be disappointed if what you expect is there if you haven't talked about it. All right, finally, let's talk about the best snacks for game nights. What do you recommend? Well, these days, as much as my younger self would probably disown me for saying so, <laughs> go with healthier options. Not only because they are healthier, but often because they are less messy. messy. Mm -hmm. uh, something like uh, yogurt, yogurt covered raisins or uh, dried fruit, uh, cut up some veggies. There's no reason to reinforce the horribly unhealthy Mountain Dew Dorito stereotypes and pizza when as we did when we were younger so right now man mountain dune dorito sounds fantastic <laughs> talking about all this uh one of the ones i see recommended the most by people are um baby carrots because you can just you put a bowl of them out but then you get your dip thing so i don't know about the dip thing if you avoid dip i'm fine with just eating baby carrots they've got a i gotta admit the crunch of baby carrots is part of what's good about it i i gotta admit part of me is like when it's game night that's when you like let the other stuff go and you're like no no it's game night I, this is the night i splurge this is the night and be honest that's kind of what we do with the, the eating out is this is the this is when we get the good food from the local places it's probably not really the thing kind of they're, they're um sometimes foods not uh all the times foods and again uh for me basically what i said before avoid sticky saucy powdery things anything that coats your fingers and then can coat game components and again i mentioned dips i personally think are horrible uh no matter how careful you are someone's gonna drop drip something somewhere now, as for personal favorites, pretzels are definitely one of my favorites. Um, there's lots of different types of pretzels out there from sticks to twists to things stuffed with different things to mustard flavored and so on. Uh, personally, we've been sticking with a brand lately called Neo Brothers. It's the one we've been enjoying the most. They're really thick sticks and they're really crunchy. 
Another one that's good for not getting anywhere is licorice, uh, whether that's just little squares of licorice or it's strips or whatever. Though I do warn you, if you are playing with anyone with maturity level, like my friends, someone's going to get whipped with a licorice whip at some point at my table. Now, some of those combos and some of the pretzels I've noticed are stuffed with peanut butter, which did remind me of something that I hadn't originally put in the notes, but I threw in here because I didn't want to forget to mention it, is also something very, very important whenever considering snacks for game night, and that is taking into account allergies, both your own, of course, but also other people's. Some people can't even be in the room with their allergen without having a problem. This is something we deal with in our game nights because um, Sean Hamilton, not Sean from Hamilton, has a specific allergy, which I don't know if he cares if I mention or not, but I won't just in case, that if it's just in the room with him, he will get a massive headache, which he'll just end up with game night ending sooner rather than later. And while it's generally understood these days, if you are doing any sort of snack pooling or bringing, bringing snacks for other people, uh, ask about uh, dietary preferences. There are, could be vegans, pescatarians, mm -hmm. vegetarians, and any others that I'm not familiar with out there. Um, and, you know, don't just say, well, I like meat, so you don't get to eat. That, that's just not okay. No, I agree. Also uh, religious. You don't want to bring pork to certain game nights, for example. No, no meat on, on Friday night game nights. Yeah. Uh, a thing for some people. It, it was a thing for, well, it was a thing for Catholics for a while, but they fixed that, thankfully. Do they? That's not a thing anymore? No. I, I'm like, I don't know. I know the fish and, local fish and chip places seem to... Oh. At least act like it's still a thing. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's about it for our talk about the burden placed on the game teacher. No, wow. that's about it on our talk about the burden placed on the GM having to put out food on the table on the game night. That one was in blue. I, I don't, I don't, it, it should have got edited. My bad. I even edited yeah, the next one. that's it for our talk on snacks. Talk on snacks and who should bring snacks and what snacks you should bring. Yeah, and make it simple. Just like eat beforehand. That, that's that's all anymore. Um, though I get it. They like said it used to be for years. The 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 it's Saturday night. It's time to relax and let go and eat the horrible foods and drink the horrible drinks. And as we got older, those became a different type of horrible drink. But it was a thing. Well, Remember. it also used to be we would go for hours and hours. I mean, we well, would yeah. game game for eight hours. More, more than 12. We started at noon yeah. and often wrapped up after midnight. So, I mean, you needed to eat at that point, but yes. you didn't necessarily need to snack as much as we did. No. We didn't even get into Big Bite hot dogs from 7-Eleven and how healthy those must have been. Remember, if you've got a game or game night question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bell.